Hi everybody. I wanted to bring you back to the painting. We've done, I've done a whole lot of different things here. I've been adding in a lot of detail in the little, in the mountains, a lot more coloring and some, to add some depth and difference there. Pretty happy with that. I've done some work here on the castle. Let's see if I can bring you up a little closer and see what I've done on the castle there. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I thought I'd bring you in at this point of the painting because this is the scariest part of the painting for me. I've done all of this background work that I'm really happy with and now I'm going to be putting stuff on the front of it and it's at that point where you're like, oh goodness, I could ruin this painting. Now a lot of paintings, I will just go ahead and kind of finish it up like that because I'm really happy with how it is. However, this is a painting that has a purpose. So this painting is actually for uh, a specific purpose. So for that reason, we're gonna have to go ahead and put some stuff here on the front. So what I'm doing right now is I'm putting in this wall. So I'm building a wall and arched opening entrance into going to the castle. And this is very scary. This is a part that like you just have to hold your breath and do it. Although you do need to take some time and make sure you're placing everything where you want it to be placed. And of course like right now it looks terrible. So I started this part here. It's just a big block blob thing. And that's what I'm doing now is another kind of blob block. But the goal is for this to be rock work here. And to do that, I'm just taking Payne's Gray and Gesso and just kind of smushing it, flipping it. And it's pretty hard to see them you know that we're definitely building a side piece to an archway but there's a reason that I'm doing this I, I've done this on other paintings because I'm going to be putting initials into these blocks here and I'm going to be putting a special name over the top here <clears throat> and then I think what I'm going to do over here before I get too far with the blocks is I'm going to actually put in a tree. So to do that I need another paint color. Excuse me as I, you see my glasses. Yeah, let's see if I duck down here. <clears throat> Don't want to interfere with the video here. <laughs> so I'm just going to experiment right now with burnt sienna because one of the things that I do in my paintings is kind of keep the color scheme in the same tone. So like the, the mountain's base was Payne's Gray and Gesso and then um, a bunch of different greens and the uh, I used a little bit of the burnt sienna and that so and that's also what's in the pathway here is there's burnt sienna with Payne's gray and then I'll be highlighting it so in different areas I like to keep the color scheme so that it doesn't clash with each other and later I'm hoping we'll see how this goes but I want to paint roses that are hanging down on this, these rock walls so now I'm going to take some burnt sienna, some gesso, and I think just a little bit of that yellow ochre, and then some more of that Payne's Gray to create an interesting brown instead of just like a black base tree. And we're going to make it a pretty old tree because this is an old painting. So we're going to start the trunk base here like that. I'm just using an angled 
brush. And right now I'm not worrying too much about detail. I'm just trying to kind of get the shape in. Remembering, because see, in the trunk of this tree, I'm going to be um, etching a heart with some initials in that heart. And at the same time, I want to be, you know, observant of what I'm covering up. I want to be careful. Now, the base of the tree needs to be pretty large, so we're going to bring it and make it pretty fat down here. And we're not covering up anything special down here. But we want the trunk and the roots to just kind of float down into our grass here. And later we'll do detail and I'll show you how I can make it look like it's, you know, actually in the ground right now. It's just sitting on top of it. <clears throat> and we want it to be pretty twisted. So to get a twisted effect, I just work between the different colors that I've got and I bring gesso in to give it some character, get that bark off the, come off the canvas and give us some 3D. Also, I need it to be light enough to etch that heart in so that we can see it. So I have to keep that in mind. It can't be too dark of a trunk for that. So anyway, I just wanted to take a few minutes. This is not a super long video. I just kind of wanted to show you where this is the scary part. And, you know, honestly, this is where you can lose control of your painting. And that's really depressing because you've done so much work. But, you know, it happens to everybody. So if it happens to you, don't get too upset. I slowly build up these things because I, I don't want to overdo it right away because you don't want to have something that you can't take back. So that's why I don't always, you know, get the full thing in right away. And on these stone wells, there'll be a whole lot more detail going in here. Um, I like to add a little green to it because, you know, we're going to have, like, it's just ancient, so you got mold growing on it, things like that. But then you also want to make sure it stands out <clears throat> from the background, which has a lot of Payne's Gray in it, so usually you have to sharpen that edge with a pretty dark piece of your color, and you don't want to lighten it too much along that edge so that you can really see it and then it just stands out. So then as I go I will fill in different places with different colors and then highlight it. Like right now I'm working with uh, a dark green. I can't remember the name of it but hooker green. That's the color. I was like trying to remember what that green was. And then I slowly just blend in these colors so that it looks like a, you know, a rock. And in this case, you know, some of these places were built with like really big, specially cut rocks. So it's clearly a chiseled piece, but I don't actually want this to look that way. I want it to be a little bit broken down because it's been here for centuries but still usable. Still a place, you know, imagine that's a broken down place, but inside it's all modern. <laughs> it's got all, sorts, all, all the modern amenities you could want. Unless you don't want them, it's totally up to you. That's the nice thing about a painting, it's your fantasy, whatever you want. <clears throat> Warmed up today, so we're happy about that not too hot yet either which makes me really happy I love this in between weather so now my trunk my tree trunk looks a little funky because it's right there but I will slowly work it up um, it's gonna be twisting back again and then there and then we're gonna have uh, leaves happening in it 
Um, but I'm gonna wait until I get most of it before I get the, the tree uh, twisting. So now I'm a little bit regretful. I might have made it, should have made it straight, but it just hit me just now. <laughs> Maybe I should have made it straighter, but that's okay. We just have to decide. I don't want the leaves to overpower the painting. So that's where I have a little trouble in my indecisions. Don't want it to overdo the painting. Anyway, I hope you're all having a great week out there and I'll be back again soon and see how we're going with this painting. Have a great day. Bye.